Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for Funfold Friday. My Woo-hoo. name's Barry. And I'm Jay. And together we are with TC Crafts. Welcome to our channel. So this evening Barry is creating a never ending yes. card featuring the Be Mine DSP designer series paper from uh, Stampin' Up's uh, mini catalog January to April 2024. Yes. Um, we'll say hello to those of you who've joined us live, so thank you so much. So if you are watching the replay, do fast forward to the demonstration if you prefer. And we'll say hello to those of you who've joined us. Thank you. So we have, uh, we've also got Tommy. He's <laughs> determined to get on the table tonight. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get the mouse and I think he's trying to, um, he's trying beat to get me it to you. it. <laughs> yeah. So we have bl- the Bling Bling Crafter, Pat. Hello to you. We have Cheryl. Um, uh, Charlotte, Sandra, Nancy Amato, Be More Stampers, Quinn, Mary Lou, Cheryl Christensen, <laughs> sorry, Cheryl Christensen Adams, um, Carol Ann, hello, hello, uh, and Mardi and Deborah, thank you so much for joining us. And John, hi, John and Susan. So yes, uh, if you are just coming in, do say hello. Let us know where you're coming from, or watching um, the replay, uh, and we will get cracking. Yes, we will do. So I was just reading the comments there. I see Cheryl's just um, obviously commented saying Stampin' Up's in Utah, and um, yes. Charlotte mentioned there. Yeah, it's the it's the Stampin' Up Home Office. So that's kind of like where they all do the decisions and. Um, and farm out all the news to us around the world. Yeah, I, so I don't know if like any demos can just. I don't. I don't know actually if it's a uh, rock up and um, thing. I doubt. You probably it. need to. Um, yeah, I reckon it's probably invite only or make an appointment. I don't reckon that. Well, I do, yeah. Who knows? Check it out. Let us know, Cheryl, yeah. if you find out anything out yes. like that. It'd be interesting. Yeah, to Yeah, because know. I was chatting to Cheryl on the, on the live this morning or uh, the pre-record live. Uh, okay. On the um. Premiere, shall yes. I say. I knew we'd be using the adoring hearts this morning yes, for that I as well. Was. So I'm also wear, wearing, I'm also using um, the adoring hearts dies and hybrid embossing folders tonight as well for this. Cool. So you may have seen the reel which I've put out already. So if you have, then I'm going to show you how to make it. If not, then um, sit back, well, relax, and enjoy. And enjoy. <laughs> so there we go. Stop laughing at me. You laugh at me enough times. I know I do. Lovely. Okay, so what we are going to do is um, let's start off with our paper. I'm going to be, as Jay's mentioned, I'm going to be using the Be Mine Designer Series paper and I'm going to be using the Poppy Parade uh, paper. The pattern which coordinates nicely with this is Real Red, Real Red. But one I couldn't put my hands on Real Red. Oh, it doesn't, oh no, it says Sweet Sorbet actually, which is probably why Poppy Parade works quite well with it as well. I could have put my hands on Sweet Sorbet actually, but I picked up Poppy Parade. Um, so that way I thought it was real red for some reason. So, But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what I've got down here as Poppy Parade. It's, it's a nice, it works lovely. And the other colours which coordinate in this thing here is Daffodil Delight, Lemon Lime Twist, Petal Pink, Pool Party and Sweet Sorbet. So it's really fun. Thing. And I was going to, well, I was going to use the flight and airy design series paper, and then I looked at it. And I thought I didn't have nothing to go with it, and then I saw this, and I thought this is quite Good cute. Choice. And obviously, if I wanted to fussy cut any of these out, I could do. And I thought it was really quite cute to use, and I've decided to turn it into a Valentine's Day card. So I'm a little bit ahead of the game of Valentine's Day this year. So you might actually be able to make a Valentine's card, which I've designed um, before Valentine's. <laughs> Um, and that, that's the back side of it. But it's easily adaptable for any occasion. So, because the measurements of the card are exactly the same, it's just really how you're going to decorate it. So, I'm going to try and do the fun fold first and then go on to the decoration. So, I get everything out of the way first of all. Um, but it's really quite simple. It's, well, I say simple. It's, there are, I think there are probably some easier ones out there, if I'm honest with you, which kind of like stick pieces together. But this is I, the one that I've got here is an all-in-one card piece. It's one which I did about three years ago, actually, and it's Mary that has requested this. So hopefully, Mary, if you are watching, you can follow she along is. with this one. I've just seen it, Mary, you're on there. Mary, this is your never-ending card, but it's it's my version of it. Um, hopefully, it's easy enough for you to do, and I'm going to be doing it in inches as well. 
So what you want to do is basically start off with a piece of card base which is 8 by 8 inches. Okay. 6 by 8, you say? 8 by 8. 8 by 8. 8 by 8 inches, okay. And that's all the cardstock you need. What you want to do is you want to score this at... Two, four, and six inches. So it's keeping it simple. Two, four, and six. You're basically making equal squares along this. And we're going to do this again. I'm going to go around it. Two, four, and six. So basically you want 16 equal squares is what you're going to do on this. Okay. Then I'm going to fold and burnish all of these. I've done that, I fold it scored at two, four, and six, I'm then folding on every single score line. Okay. Then what I want to do is I then want to fold this in half. And I'm gonna grab my trim in again and I want to cut away these two middle squares. So basically I want to go in at make sure you put your blade in the correct space. And I'm cutting it so I folded it in half like this. And I'm cut it, so I basically want to get rid of the four centre squares, but it's easy enough to go in with a trimmer, fold it in half. The fold is at the top here. I can line it up at two inches, which is why inches are easy, because it's just um, it's just easy to count. Everybody can go to two, I'm sure. So I'm going to come down to that first score line. I'm pushing a little bit harder than I would do normally because I want to go through two score two score pieces. Take it over to six. And obviously with our trimmer, you can butt it right up against the edge and that's that. And then I'm going to take that one down. So gently coming down to that score line. Charlotte said it's the easy way. Is this the easy way, is it? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to then pop it in at two inches here. And then I'm just going to put my blade in the middle. And I'm going to just cut between those cut lines. And that should, hopefully, be able to pull that centre part out. So there we have it. So we've now got our square with our square taken out of the middle. I have hopefully made this a little bit easier for you. I'm going to bring over a piece which I've done here already, which is going to hopefully help you with the um, sticking side. I have got numbers on here because if you wanted to stick your pattern paper on, these are the coordinating numbers. So one, 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 two, 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 then over three, 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 four, 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 four. So if you wanted to stick all of your designer series paper on now, but it's easier to do it afterwards once we've done it. But the crosses are the pieces which you need to stick together. So I basically need to fold. That one needs to go over to that one. That one needs to go over to that one there. And then when I'm on the opposite side, then I go the opposite way. That one to that one, that one to that one. It will make sense in a moment. But if you want to just have a, a, want a screenshot that or something, you might be able to, that might help you visualise that a little bit more. So it's the ones of the crosses of the squares which need to be stuck together, front and back. Okay, so that's on that one. So it's going to go that one to that one. So I'm going to go glue on this one here, and I'll fold that over, and then stick that down. Just hold it in place a little bit, and then I'm going to do this one over here. So I'm going to come over to that one. Okay, I'm just going to manipulate a little bit if necessary, just to 
try and get the so that they butt up so I'm kind of putting out if it's if it feels like it's overlapping just pull them a little bit to separate them maybe just kind of a score a little bit so you've got two pieces stuck together here and I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to then go Feeling harder than it needs to be. <laughs> Why is it when I do it on my own, um, when I'm working, thing, everything's going fine, and then as soon as I get on camera, I confuse myself. I said, take a mental picture and don't forget to blink. <laughs> And say click. Why am I not getting this right? So I've just done it. Sorry about this. So I like, <laughs> I might have to start again. So. It worked so well. I did it the first time when I did it earlier. And can I work out how to do it again now? Yes. <laughs> You're on pressure. Uh, I am. Pressure. That's why. I am. It's like just bear with me. I know I haven't messed up because I just got to just. And if I can't do it for you, then how can I teach you? I think, yeah. Just so if I just glued the wrong pieces together, I think I should have. That one. That's it. Sorry, I had it. Yeah, I did have it. So, so let's just go. I'm just going to mark those for a moment just so I know what one needs to go together. It's that one and that one and that one. And that one. What I should have done is I should have put these. I should have put these marks on the piece of paper before I'd folded it to actually whilst it was flat out with my template. So yes. So I've gone. The first one which I did was I went over one to one and then one to one that one. Then I'm going to then turn it over and then I, it's just, I did that one there but I did it that way around first I started with that one and that one and then and then I want to come down and then go up so that one can come up to there It is because I've got an audience, yeah. Cheryl. <laughs> do you think you've explained it enough for people to follow, or do you want to do it again? I think I might have to do it again. So, and then that then... No, something's gone wrong. You know what? It's only a bit of paper. Bear with. <laughs> Bear with. Let's start again. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Funfell Friday. Um, so, let's go. I know it's 8 by 8. I did my first one. No problems whatsoever. I know. I, 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 you got me to, to go through it again. It looks amazing. So then score. So 8 by 8. Score at 2, 4, and 6. Two, four, and six. 
If this doesn't work this time, then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Don't ask me. in half, take out that center, take out that center part. I said to Jay, I said, oh, this will be a quick one tonight, it's fine, I know what I'm doing, which I do, but. <laughs> Pretty sign. Let's do what I said I was going to do, and then I'm going to then stick together this one and this one, this one and this one. I'll turn it over and do exactly the same. So let's make sure. So I'm going to go that way, and same with my template. Then I'm going to go that one, that one. That one, that one. Okay. I'm sure, this is what I did earlier on. Maybe in your template next time put G in it for blue. <laughs> Something's gone. There we have it. So it is a never ending card. <laughs> Did I have it correct the first time then? Maybe I just needed to manipulate it a little bit. Chuck it up in. <laughs> Chuck it up me. I usually put a card. <laughs> no, I obviously did something wrong on that one there. So we're sticking all of those down, and then that basically then carries on opening up and keeps on going and going and going. I still feel that like I've made a mistake somewhere along here because I've got a piece here which is sort of like saying it should be um, should be stuck down. But um, I don't know what I've gone and done. I'm so sorry about this. This is why I should be pre-recorded and not live. So. <laughs> 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 because I can stop and start and edit all of this bit out. But I think it's good that people can see mistakes that can happen. So that there is the never-ending card. Um, and then all you need to do is you need to decorate this. So let's see what we can do with 
this. Let's bring over my designer series paper. So Mary, I might have to record this one again for you so that it's um, without the mistakes. I hope you're enjoying the live. So what I want to do is I want to cut some designer series paper and I want to take this to three and a quarter by three and a quarter, so three and three quarters, sorry, by three and three quarters. And I want to cut four panels out like this. So three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Cut four squares out. And then from those, you then want to then take them into um, four squares of one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. But try and work methodically on this one here so that what you do is you keep them in order because this is obviously just this paper obviously is pattern orientated. So I'm going to take this into one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So basically, I'm basically creating four equal squares. And just keep these, as you're doing it, lay them out in front of you as they are. Everyone sending you love. Thank you. So I'm just these all together. And again, if you're not pattern specific, you don't need to worry about doing it the way that I'm doing it. Just make sure that you remember where it is and then when we're sticking it down I suppose make sure that you um, have it the correct way as well okay so then what we want to do is we want to take this here and we then want to then stick our pieces onto these squares so you want to but there is a way if you have it it will can sometimes potentially stand itself up which is quite handy for decorating it, for, for actually giving it to somebody. So before you stick it down, just see if you want it to go that way so that it can stand up on somebody's side. And then that's the way, once you've decided, then make sure that's the way you're going to stick your pattern paper down. So I'm going to go at the, like this. Would and then... Would you stand it up in the love side? Or instead of the love side? Sorry, Jay. You know, the... Um, the front would be I. Mm. Yeah. Would you stand it up on the love side instead, so it's just the full love? Oh, I don't know. That's me. Oh, it's just... <laughs> well, it doesn't make any difference. Mm. It's still... work both ways I think um, so then what you want to do is you don't want to stick this down I'm gonna leave that square off for a moment because I haven't quite decided whether or not I want to put that one back on if I if we decided on doing a full DSP on the front page Jay did we I can't remember no 
Sorry, I'll, I'm, I'm reading my notes. Okay. Did we decide to do four DSP panels yeah. on the front page? We did, didn't we? Yeah. And stick those down. So just stick these four pa the panels on every single one. So you want to go round and stick those on like that, and then turn it. And do your next one. Which is why you need to lay them out on your table in your four squares and then stick them down as you've got them laid out. It is, yeah. So, so you say like it's great for like kids and men. <laughs> it is. It's a yeah. It is a very. It's a very. It's a, I think it's a young fold, for definitely somebody who's young at heart or something like that. Or for kids, it's a very interactive card. Or for um, an alternative, an alternative for fidget spinners. <laughs> yes. So I'm just sticking all of these on. So of course Pauline's got this DSP because she did our paper share. Nancy Amato said, I may be hoarding that PDSP. Don't hoard it. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk. Well, I think we're doing. We're getting better with our yeah, DSP. Yeah, I would say so. Oh, that back looks lovely as well with the um, daisy. Yes, the daisies are nice on the back here as well, but I'm afraid I've used all of that paper. <gasps> so, um, what? unless there's another sheet in there, I don't think you're going to have um, any daisies. <laughs> unless this is our part of the paper share. It is. Then yes, I've used all of the daisies up. I'm so sorry. And then we go around again. And then on this one, I am going to leave one square off. Because I will then do the same size. So I'm going to leave this square off down here. Because I will then do that as another piece in basic white. Yeah, Mary, if you're going to watch this over again and follow it, don't follow my first lot of instructions. <laughs> um, actually, I said I was going to do... I put the glue on the wrong piece. That's fine. I'm going to do it over on this one. Yeah. So Mary asked, would it look weird to use different DSP on the four squares, or do they cross during the flips? No. They never, they would always, they would always stay, stay on the four. same, in the same four. Yes, they don't, they never ever get mixed up. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. And that's, and then we are then back to the beginning. Okay, so then that stands up like so, like that. And then you basically, if you can remember how to do it, that way, that way, that way. And that there is your never ending card. It will continue, keep on spinning and spinning and spinning. But yeah, those four panels will always stay in the same area. Okay? They will never ever cross over. So that's basically that. Then for the decoration on this one here, what I've decided to do is let's make sure I get it back to the beginning again. 
So that one there, so that's my front. So I need to just take a bit of basic white. I just need to cut myself another piece which was the same size, so one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. That can go on my very last panel. Then what I've got here is I am going to take some, you know what, it might just be easier for the purpose of this video. You should have got it out beforehand. Your adhesive sheets, Jay. Do you know where they are? It, uh, I've got a screw on. Sorry, sorry. Oh, that one there. Be, I think you put it in here somewhere. Did I put it in there? I thought they were in the big. But I, oh, I, here. I, somewhere. Here. Have a look in there. Okay, yeah, I've got them. See, I know where you put stuff. <laughs> they see me because I don't. I'm clever. Oh, I think that maybe there might be the F1 out. I'll go with that one there. So I've got my adhesive sheets right here. And I need some. You're clever. <laughs> it's the only time he's going to be clever. <laughs> and I'm going to take some black. So what you could do is, it depends on how you wanted to do this, you could just cut them out letter by letter, but for the purpose of this video, it's just easier for me to do the next part on a whole sheet of paper. Because what I'm gonna do is I am gonna grab the mini alphabet dies. Ooh. And that one there. Okay, and I'm gonna remember to use adhesive sheets on this one here because on my demonstration, when I did it before camera, which went perfectly, no mistakes whatsoever, um, it was a nightmare to stick them down. So I've just gotta remember now how to use this now. So, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut a piece which is approximately the same size, at, well, which is just a little bit bigger than this piece right here. And then once you've cut these out, you can then pop these letters in a little bag and you'll have them already with your letters, with the, the tape already attached to them. So what we're gonna do is Take one of these little strips off here and stick it down like that. And then I'll do the next one. And try not to do that, but that's fine. Go on like that there. And then the final piece, it is very, very sticky and the glue comes off very easily. Like that. Just cut that down to size, like so. And then I'm just gonna run this through the machine to cut these out. do it this side here so I now cut on that side so where the back is like that So I'm just going backwards and forwards a few times because I'm going through that adhesive sheet. I just need to make sure I cut it and get all the way through, okay? So that's that one. I think that has cut. And then what we're gonna do is we can then remove that. And then all of these have now got your letter, so I want an E. I want a 
V and I want a U. I want an O. I want an L. And I want an I. That's an A. There's my eye just popped out there. So there Put we it go. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake, could I just give you that for a moment just so they don't disappear? So you can see we've got all of these letters which have all cut out of this and they're all gonna have this paper on the back of them. So Ooh. they've all got they've all got sticky backs to them now. Save them. So that's that one. Pop that to one side because I want to do my next part now which is my embossing side. So I'm going to bring in the Adoring Heart dies. And I'm going to use these big ones right here. I'm also going to bring in the Adoring Heart embossing, hybrid embossing folder, which is this one here. I'm also going to bring in a bit of coffee paper for a moment because I may have some excess ink on my brayer. So I'm going to use our brayer. So this is an old brayer which we had, which we purchased previously. And we do sell um, new brayers. So if you got, if you haven't got one, then you can purchase a brayer from us in from the catalogue or from yourself wherever you are. Um, if you're not in the UK, uh, then you can buy one of the briars from the catalogue. So three, we've got this. Sorry. Um, Charlotte asked how tall they are. Each letter is three quarters of an inch. Okay, lovely, thank you. So I just want to see, what did I say the coordinating colour was with that design? The series Sweet, paper? Sorry. No, with the blue. Um, well, pool party. Oh, what, it was balmy. What do you class blue? Pool party as a green, did you say? No, it's a blue one. You it's said soft sea foam. Oh, okay. All right, then. I knew it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these in... I need to also get my piece of basic whites ready as well. And what I need to do is I need to have a bit of basic white here measuring six by six. So let's just give myself a little bit of room. What I'm going to do is I've got my pool party. And I'm going to be inking up the part on the... The part which the die sits into. It sits into both, but I'm going to... It's the part which has got the stamping up logo on it. I'm going to ink, put the die into this like that. But before I do that, I'm going to get my briar. And I'm going to transfer my ink over onto my brayer, like so. And then I'm going to run this over this embossing folder. So I'm just going to... And what I do with the ink as well is you pick it up and then go down. Because if you just go backwards and forwards, all you're going to be doing is just inking up the same area on here. So can I pick up and then run it around and the same when you're doing it just over make sure you pick pick up you can go several ways like that pop that to one side then you can see the you can, I think you can just about see the ink in there it's transferred over we then want to pop the die in like so and then we want to then grab our paper and then we then want to like that sandwich it together and then don't let go of that okay bring in your your cutting machine and this is a 3d embossing for a 3d plate so we need to just take out all of the plates apart from the the big plate at the bottom, you need the grey plate, pop that through your machine, hinge first into this. And then this is going to 
colour cut and emboss all of those hearts. All in one pass. So we did an unboxing with this a while ago and you would have seen we did a demonstration on that. Um, see it does transfer the ink over to the die so just be careful with that. Pop that to one side and have that washed. Oh yeah, I don't know if I cleaned it last time I used it. And there we have it. It's so it's embossed these lovely hearts on this background, which I think is quite, which is lovely as well. But you've got all of these little hearts, which have now embossed, and have got the can and have got the colour in them as well. So there is ink in here. So just either carry on doing what you need to do, and um, do some more. But I would say just keep that to one side now, and. Have that washed. So I'm just going to pop that in there like that and then I'll just put that next to the machine for the time being so I don't get any ink on it. But there we have it. Isn't that cute? Isn't that just lovely how those have actually come out? So you can either leave them, do them without the ink in but you can then do them like this with the ink in as well. And I think this works really well with just popping some of the detail around. It kind of gives the hearts a little bit of a halo on here. It's like a little bit of a drop shadow it gives on that. So lovely pop my ink away and then let's bring this back over again so we know that one two three four so on the fourth one i can pop that panel down there because that's where i'm going to pop my sentiment if you or so it gives you at least it gives a space for somebody to write something let's pop that on now That's that one. Nice. Okay. And then with this, we're back to one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop one heart on here. I'm going to take my eye. Did, no, did we say we weren't going to do anything on the, the eye on this? It was going to be on the next one, wasn't it? What do you need? I'll take your pick tool. I buried it. I'm going to you. Oh, oh, that's why I can't. It's not even, I haven't even buried it. I haven't even got it. <laughs> Because I was closing your die. So just peel the backing off of this. And then we can then pop an eye on the heart. So that one there. Then we can then do the same with the L O V E. What catalog are those in? The mini catalog, January to April, twenty twenty-four. Yeah. Everything which we've used tonight, actually, yeah, is from the new mini catalog. Apart from obviously the adhesives, um, adhesive sheets there in there, the annual catalog. So at the moment, it doesn't matter if I mess up my spelling because I'm not sticking them down yet. So I'm just putting some coordinating letters on each die here. And this makes it a little bit easier because we've got those adhesive backs, backs on here. Let's maybe we could use a V rather than a U, shall we? These are lovely little letters, actually. They are. Yeah, it's got it's quite a nice size, and because it's one die. Yeah. You do get left with loads of different letters, but you can keep them in a baggie. Yeah, you can in a, you can keep, get a little bag if you've got a little bag there, and then you can separate them over into letters, or just put them in there, and depends on how organised you want to be. 
with these. I've done one in white, so then I can just color them in blends yeah. or even a brayer. So then whatever you want to color them in, you have options to yeah. if you want to change the color. So did we say we were gonna leave it a one like that, Jay? On the front, or we're going to put the eye on the front. I can't remember what we said we were going to do. We were going to do it um, as just is. as is. Yeah. yeah. So what I've got here is I'm going to take my because otherwise the the front will be blank. Yeah. Don't you think? So I'm going to take my eye and I'm going to pop that on some dimensionals. You had to add two. When I did my card for this morning, I only did one. I was thinking of doing three. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so I. Maybe it was if it was the mini, you can add three. Well, now that you've done that, I'm <laughs> going to use three now. No. One. No. <laughs> two. Three. See. Now, who would put three dimensional? Are you a one, on... two, or a three dimensional person? Or would you use the mini? I would use the mini for a three. Although I did put one. <laughs> for my God. One. Two. Oh, let's go. Pick. Let's use a mini in the middle here now, shall we? <laughs> and three. Are you putting four? No. You know, I can see you the video. So we do that. How can we do a pole? Ooh. Let's go back to two. We're fine. You only did three because I said it. Uh huh. Four. I was thinking three, but okay. then <laughs> I thought no, I'll stick two. So, Never too many dimensionals, Mardi. No, I agree. Pauline, John. Rita, Gina, Charlotte, and Marty said three, <laughs> and Mary. See, it, it, three does make sense. I have gone back to two, but. I would cut that big mini. And then dimensional. we have A at U. So I start, I'm going to go with U down here. that and then that goes over and then you can then write your message there and that's basically it I love you and there we have it and then that can then stand up like that um, yeah, if, probably might have been better so it depends on how you want the love to stand up if you wanted the love to stand up then you would have then should have, we should have done it the other way so that the love goes like that, like Jay did say at the beginning, but I thought it was, but no, so it starts with the eye and then it stands up. Like that. So he says. So this is the one which I did earlier on, which I had no problems making whatsoever. So we have it, and I've done it with the, I didn't do the designer series paper on this one here, and I did this with the um, petal pink letterpress technique with the embossing folder. And then that goes through, I love you. And then down here like that. Okay. And then that stands up quite nicely again, like so. Hey. So there we have it. Mm. There are my never ending cards. Um, which should be easy, was e is easy. Um, so would if you... you just stick it down correctly at the beginning, <laughs> would you say make a template? I would say make a template and um, and mark it properly. Yeah, but even when I did that on the second time, it didn't actually. I, I still struggled with it. Down. It's probably because you didn't g it. You just put crosses. I saw lots of crosses. 
But it's done. Yeah. Well done. And you've used the SP. There we have it. I think that's quite sweet, Love isn't it? it? Look at the mess, though. Now, if you want to see a how a um, yeah, I know the mess is really bad. Where's the mouse gone? Dad. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> if you want to see how, um, did you do a video for that? You must have done, didn't you? You did the never ending, and I did the. Did you do the video the for the the box? I'm sure I did. Maybe. Yes, I think I did, but I don't know where. Okay, all right, we'll have to find that for you and I'll try and pop the link in the comments. Lovely. Um, but there is a little box um, for it as well. If you want to actually see a um, uninterrupted video, then you can also check out this one here. So let me just bring it up for you for a moment. Oh. Boop. Our old intro tune. Yeah, it is. I love it in the pool party as well. Yeah, the pool party works quite well. Cool. So I'm just going to grab this. I'll so pop this in you're the comments. Doing that. Um, yeah, I did a quick video um, with the Adoring Hearts Hybrid in Boston folder this morning for the Global Summit video hop. Um, and the theme was love, so I just used the embossing folder in an A6 card and created, well, pre-made pre these cards and just stuck on the, but I really like the white emboss on the gold as well. And of course the letterpress technique uh, that Barry showed. Excellent, lovely. So I've just popped a link in there. That is to the video which we did um, three years ago with this one here. Um, went a lot smoother. Than <laughs> what was was what, what was the uh, stamp set? It was really cute with the ladybug, wasn't it? It was. It was the um, ladybug one, which was the little ladybug. Oh, little ladybug. Host stamp set um, from a couple of years ago. So if you want to see how that is an uninterrupted one then that is over on, I've just posted the link for you, but if you just go onto our website, matusucrafts.com, type in never ending card, then it will pip, it will pop up for you anyway. If you can't find I it. I love it. So there we have it. It's cute, isn't it? It is. It's one of those ones which you do just want to keep on, um, keep on fiddling with. So, yeah. um, it can easily oh, that um, one stands. Oh, it does stand. Okay, the love does stand as well. You just need to kind of like manipulate and pull bits yeah. out so a little bit to make sure. If the person who receives it does fold it slightly wrong as well, it can go a little bit wrong. So um, things can get a little bit out of sync if some if they force play things into places. Mm. So um, maybe send them a quick video. <laughs> yes, not my video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said like you opening it and you're like look. Yeah. So there Love we have it. it. Love it. Cool. Lovely. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Well done. That's really so, cool. Excellent. I might, I might have to case that for a blog Instagram up. <laughs> or just use that one. But, yeah. There we have it. Love. Cool. Yay. Lovely. So thank you. Yeah, it is a bit of a fidget. It's a fidget card. So um, excellent. <laughs> All right, well, we were going to say goodnight. Um, we'll be back with you again on Sunday evening, same time, same place, for um, for Jay's demonstration. <laughs> Just pa pass it to, uh -huh. right on to me. Okay, um, no so, yeah, I don't know what it's going to play with, but, yeah, we will see you Sunday night, same time, same place. Yes, and if you make one for yourself, do share it um, on your so social media and then tag us so we can see your creations or share it on our crafts. Crafty Stampers mm -hmm. Facebook page. That'll yes. be amazing. <laughs> Lovely. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in again in a few days. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.